All right, about 300,000 plant hoppers have been released on the Hearty Beer Spools Dam to control what's known as the Green Horror. Joining us now to discuss this is Ginello Sibola, a PhD candidate at the Centre for Biological Control at Rhodes University. Ginello, very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us and a warm welcome to The Full View. First of all, the aquatic weeds have an impact on the economy and the social life of communities and uh, I suppose their effects on human health and the environment uh, cannot be overstated. So let's talk about the effect on the environment. Okay, so with Tartabia Sport Dan, if you think about it, it's... Kaikinere? All right, we seem to have lost uh, Kinelo as a result of uh, connectivity issues. Uh, we'll try to re-establish connection with him uh, in a moment. Well, Kinelo is a PhD candidate at the Center for Biological Control at the Rhodes University. And I want us to discuss in greater detail the role that, uh, you know, an insect of, uh, or, well, an army of insects that has been released onto the Hartis Dam and the role that it will play in terms of controlling the aquatic weed uh, known as uh, hyacinth. Now, uh, Kinelo, I'm, well, I'm told that you're now back with us on the line. The line is not the best, but uh, we'll try our best. Hi, can you hear me clearly? I can hear you now. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, so if you think about how to be a sport dam, it's a tourism mecca, yes. right? So in September and towards the most months of spring and summer, most people want to go and experience the water. They want to boat. They want to go on sunset cruises. They want to fish. So with uh, water hyacinth covering the dam, it restricts that movement. It restricts the boat so the people that run the sunset cruise actually lose out. And the fishermen don't actually enjoy fishing um, on the dam because your rotors actually <laughs> get caught up with the plant. Um, and then that causes damage and then you lose your boat for a couple of you know, uh, days until mm -hmm. you can get it fixed. So ideally, you would want the dam to not have and in an aquatic plant that is that that's so constricting because that's a net. So if you were at Hartis, um, let's say in July, you would have seen a finer um, plant that's also another invasive that's called um, Salvinia minima. So that people could still use the dam, but with the water hyacinth, it forms these nets that actually clog up the water. You can't actually boat on the dam. Mm, mm. Let's now discuss in greater detail the role that insects play in tackling water hyacinths. Okay, so we've released a biocontrol agent. Uh, it's called Megamelis scutellaris. So it's a little plant hopper that actually just pokes holes in the plant. So we call it a petiole. So if you look at the plant, it has a long stem that we call the petiole, and it has leaves, right? Like the one that I'm showing, that yep. they are displaying right now. Uh -huh. So it pokes holes in it. And the, water, the plant then gets waterlogged and it sinks to the bottom. So what we've, had, we've done as the Center for Biological Control is that we've released insects on the dam uh, from 2018. And we've had really good successes for 2020, that summer of 2020, and 2021. What about chemicals with a natural reference? Has that been tried and tested? And what has been the success rate, if so? I don't know about chemicals on the dam that are natural chemicals. They've done a herbicide thing, which um, the Department of Water and Sanitation and DEA had put on a, a moratorium in 2016 to stop spraying because herbicides, as you know, will impact everything else. Yes. So if you spray herbicide on the dam to deal with water hyacinth, it will then, you know, because it's an aerial spray, spray then it will spray the lawns in the states and it's not selective. And that re results in the rotting of the plant very quickly and it sinks the whole mat to the bottom. That actually kills the fish in the dam because then you have too much um, decay and mm. it's happening too rapidly. You know, Kenelo, there are major differences between, uh, you know, the problems caused by aquatic weeds and those caused by terrestrial plants in the different agroecosystems. Well, what are some of these differences? Well, I think with aquatics, we haven't really 
um, looked at every, like urban spaces very well. I think Artis was one of the first urban spaces that we've done biological control on. And I know the people at the Center of Biological Control uh, have been working on terrestrial plants and they've had great successes, right? They've been mm -hmm. working with working for water and working for fire that have cut down all those invasives. Um, but for us with the biological control, the urban spaces are quite new. So we're doing artis, we're doing Ruoda plants. We usually do, um, we've had great successes in the Eastern Cape and in KZN. And now we're moving far north in the high, high belt where it gets really cold in the winters. And as you've seen, when it gets to winter, you don't see the plant. But the sad thing is that the, uh, the plant hoppers also don't survive because mm, you mm. get sub-zero temperatures and they don't survive at that temperature. Yeah. You know, but can aquatic plants cause water to be lost and work against the smooth flow of water and the navigation thereof? Definitely. So it's called trans evaporation. So it's basically the leaves actually cause more evaporation, right, to okay. happen, as opposed to when the water is not covered. So, but now, because it forms really tight nets, you can't navigate in those waters. And it also clogs the pipelines. Okay, Kinele, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. All right, that was Kinele Sibola, PhD candidate at the Rhodes University Center for Biological Control. All right, this is the full view. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back in a moment.